Welcome back, we're here to talk about Saturday afternoon's Premier League fixture between Sunderland and Norwich. Pascal, both sides lost on the opening day of the season, but there's only one place to start. Sunderland's capitulation against Leicester. Yeah, really shocking start for them, wasn't it? It was you know, a fairly kind opening fixture. A lot of people, with, especially with Ranieri, a lot of people questioning his appointment at Leicester and Sunderland go there. You know, Leicester and Sunderland, two of the favourites, you know, to go down this season. And I thought Sunderland, they would have gone there, you know, quite quite optimistic, but they go there, you know, 3-0 down inside 25 minutes. An absolutely terrible start from them, you know. Brilliant for Leicester, but for Sunderland, it's just awful. And some of the goals they're conceding, you know, the penalty they gave away, it's just so... I mean, I know Catamol's a reckless player. I mean, when he's really on form, he's a fantastic holding midfielder, but the way he just... You know, Mares is a you know tricky character, and the way he just sort of stuck his foot in like that's just so unnecessary. And you know, they never quite recovered from that. They got in the second half, you know, getting a couple of goals to Foe and Fletcher, good for them to both get get on the score sheet because Sunderland's strike force in the last sort of two three seasons, they haven't really had that consistent score who can get to double figures. You know, Defoe only came in last season. He's still he's quite aging. Fletcher's you know he's always had his history uh, injury problems, and now Wickham's gone as well. So you know that it's good that their strikers both got on the score sheet, but the result on a whole on a whole losing four two like that it's not a good start at all. I think the big concern for Sunderland fans will be are they going through the same cycle as they have been the last few seasons? It was seen as a big coup for them to get Dick Advocate at the end of last season then to keep him when he initially turned him down. People thought they might push on and maybe avoid that not be in a relegation battle but that start is just it raises so many questions. You think of Gus Poyer, you think of Di Canio before him, just coming at the end of the previous season, keep him up, stay on, and then sacked within a few months of the new season. They'll be hoping that that's not the same cycle. I think Dick Advocate, with his experience, might be able to do better than his two predecessors, but it will be a concern, particularly after that opening match, because it was such a, a terrible performance. You can't wish for a worse start to the season than that. Yeah, I know what you mean. And you look at their, you look at their squad and you think... They sort of need some sort of youth in certain areas. You look at their defence, you know, you've got O'Shea, Brown, you know, they're sort of ageing defenders who will be fairly solid, but they're never going to, you know, they're not, they're not going to be that great. Pantillamon was really good last season, I thought, in goal, and he made some good saves against Leicester as well. You know, it could have been worse if not for him, but you look elsewhere. I think they need a bit more creativity in the middle and then up front, you know, they, like I said, they probably need that. I mean, if Lenz, um, if he's going to, he's obviously their big money signing this summer. He's going to sort of, you know, take a little while to adapt to the Premier League. But I think they need, you know, maybe just a bit more youth, you know, a sort of creativity and a bit more of a bright spark because you look up and down their squad and you just think they, they just look a bit boring and if they're just going to get outplayed by some teams. Yeah, moving on to Norwich, they also lost by two goals on the opening day and there'll be a lot different feel about the club than there is at Sunderland right now because they, they performed well in that game. They're unfortunate to lose by two goals. Should have been two all, in my opinion, with Cameron Jerome's goal. I don't think that should have been disallowed. Shortly after that, they should have had a penalty probably for that push in the box. So there's a lot to, a lot of positives to take for Alex Neal from that game. They bossed long spells of it as well against the Crystal Palace side, who many think will challenge for a top, top 10 this season. I think they'll finish in the top half as well. So for them to come up, they've got a decent squad because they've kept most of them together. For them to come up and do well against a team that expected to be a top half team, really encouraging start for them. It was quite an encouraging start. I was quite surprised to see Jerome not start because he was, you know, their best striker towards the end of last season. Scored crucial goals in the playoffs. You know, scored in the playoff final against Middlesbrough, and he comes on. You know, for me, I can see why the referee gave it because, you know, if that foul happens in the middle of the park, it's, it, the referee's going to blow straight away. And the problem is, people say, you know, oh, it shouldn't be given in the box, but there's no way you can sort of you know, define that as a rule. So if the referee's given that, then you can see why, because Joel Ward's head it is right in there. He is trying to head the ball and the stud is up there. And I can see why people say, you know, you can't deny him that goal. But for me, you know, it should have been a penalty afterwards. So they've been hardly done by, for sure, on one of them. I think the other, you can see why the referee gave it. I mean, there was a lot of pressure on him, wasn't it? It was his first ever Premier League game, mm -hmm. Simon Hooper. So a big call for him. But as you say, you know, they've kept, you know, the bulk of their squad from last year. But, you know, that was the same squad that... The problem is last year they kept the same squad that got relegated from the Premier League, you know, in 20, uh, 2014. So, you know, it's, it's basically it's near enough the same squad that got relegated last time. They haven't strengthened it too much. You know, some players have come on, like Nathan Redmond, he had a great year last year. He's certainly not the same player that he was, you know, a year and a half ago. So, you know, I think they have improved, but I think there's certainly there's still signings to be made. Alex Neal has already said, you know, he's been a bit frustrated in the transfer window. They've made some signings. Wisdom's come in, you know, he could do okay on the right, but he didn't even start on uh, Saturday. Stephen Whitaker started at right back. So, I think there's still signings to be made, but for me at the moment, Norwich is certainly one of the favourites to go down. Both sides looking for their first win of the season. Which way do you see it going? 
I think the fact just that Sunderland are at home, I think that just gives them the edge because first home game of the season, there's always quite a bit of expectation, even after, you know, it was a very poor opening result for them. But I think the fact they're at home, I think that just means they're legit. I'm going to go for a 1-0 home win. I think Sunderland will need a response. They'll want a response, won't they? And if they don't get one, I think that tells us a lot about them for the rest of the season. They've got the sort of players in there, like say Lee Catamo. I know he came off after half an hour against Leicester, but he's the sort of player that can G the team up and make sure there is a response. Having said that, Norwich did impress me. On the um, on the opening day, so I can see this one being on a zero and a one all. I think so. I'm going for a draw. Pascal's going for a Sunderland victory. Thanks for joining us.